welcome you all to principles of organic synthesis at present we study the aliphatic carbon nitrogen bond formation so far we had two lectures in this topic in this lecture we will study the reactions of nucleophilic nitrogen with electrophilic carbon then the second part will focus on the reactions of electrophilic nitrogen with nucleophilic carbon systems as you can see in this slide the reaction of vinyl phosphonium chloride with aldehyde has been shown with imide followed by reaction with aldehyde and hydrolysis gives allylamine as a product there are several methods available for the synthesis of allylamine this is one of the efficient route if you have vinyl phosphonium salt you can try to react with the imide and if you react with imide with base you'll be able to generate this anion which can now undergo addition with this double bond to give this uh, elide once you form this elide which can readily react with aldehyde as you can see here this can undergo addition here then this can come here then you will be able to form this beta and intermediate which can convert into this allylic derivative where generate uh, the phosphine oxide as the by product once you form this one when you do the hydrolysis you will be able to generate this allylic amine as the product so if you look at this reaction it involves three steps first the base deprotonate this acidic proton and you will be able to generate this anion once you generate the anion which undergoes addition with this double bond which acts as electrophile is a nucleophile undergoes addition reaction to give this phosphonium this elide once you form the elide then it undergoes 2 plus 2 cyclo addition to give this betaine that betaine can can convert into this allyl derivative and once if we have this one when you do the hydrolysis you will be able to generate allyl amine as the product if you look at this reaction it involves the combination of cabriol and wittig reactions in this way if you have vinyl phosphonium bromide or any salt which can be readily reacted with imide the sub base to give this elide that elide can be further reacted with aldehyde to give this allyl derivative once if we have this allyl derivative which can be hydrolyzed to give the allyl amine as a product here the reaction of alba bromo vinyl acetate with amine the pressure base is shown you can readily undergo reaction to give this acetate as a product we look at here in this reaction the amine undergoes conjugate addition as you can see here this acts a nucleophile this undergoes this electrophile to undergoes conjugate addition 1 4 addition once then you'll be able to generate uh, this salt the salt in the pressure base you can deprotonate then you'll be able to get this amine derivative this can readily convert into this intermediate once you form this one now the amine uh, intramolecularly react with this bromine as so you can via sn2 pathway then you will be able to generate uh, this acidine salt once you form this salt this can lose uh, hbr since you carry out the reaction in the presence of base then you will be able to get this activated acidine so this one of the effective route if you have alba bromo acrylate uh, this can be readily reacted with amine in the presence of base to give acidine as a product in this way you will be able to generate activated acidine as the uh, product so as you, first it undergoes the 1 4 addition then followed by intramolecular cyclization by sn2 pathway to give this acidium salt once you form this salt in the presence of base it can be converted into acidine as a product uh, the reactions of ammonia with the nitril is shown the first example involves if you remember earlier you have this uh, electrophilic nature this carbon once we have the ammonia it can readily undergo addition reaction you will be able to form this 
this can convert into so if you have ammonia that ammonia can readily undergo addition reaction with your carbon triple bond nitrogen of uh, nitrile to give amidine as a product on the other hand if you use cyanamide as the uh, substrate and if you react cyanamide with ammonia then you will be able to make quinidine as the product as we have seen So, this can readily transform into this quantity as a product. Therefore, if you have ammonia, this can be readily added to nitrile to give the corresponding addition product. If you have simple nitrile, alkyl nitrile, then you will be able to form the amidine. On the other hand, if you have the cyanamide, then you will be able to form quantity as a product. The next example involves the reaction of uh, methylamine with this uh, isocyanate salt in water medium and here as uh, we have seen uh, it can readily undergo addition with this uh, electrophile this carbon then you will be able to form uh, methyl urea as the product. On the other hand if you use this hydrazine as here this also can readily undergo addition reaction then you will be able to form semi hydroxide as the product in the, if you look at all the reactions you make a carbon nitrogen bond basically you add a nitrogen nucleophile to electrophilic carbon then you make a carbon nitrogen bond and here also you make when you take the hydrazine as the nucleophile which can readily undergo addition with this uh, isocyanate salt to give uh, semi hydroxide as the product you can also try to add for example, in this case uh, the reaction of ammonia with uh, methyl thioisocyanate is shown which can readily undergo reaction and then you will be able to form methyl thiourea as the product. So, you can write like this when you do the reaction. you will be able to form methyl thiourea as the product. The next one the reaction of amine uh, with uh, thioisocyanate is shown here and uh, as just we have seen and it can undergo reaction in this case and you will be able to form the disubstituted thiourea this when you react with the uh, mercury oxide you will be able to form the carbodiamide as a product. This is very important compound which we use for the coupling reactions. For example, if you have carboxylic acid and uh, amine, you can couple them together in the presence of the carbodiamide. This we call it as a coupling reagent. Then it can take water, you will be able to form and this will be converted into urea. Basically say dehydrating agent if you have the carbodiamide it can readily if you have the for example carboxylic acid uh, amine you can make amide on the other hand if you have the carboxylic acid if you have alcohol you can make ester and basically you can uh, remove water it will be converted into uh, urea derivative. We will study the application of this reagent, coupling reagent in the synthesis of peptide later part. Here the reaction of ammonia with variety of unsaturated carbon systems are shown and uh, if you look at uh, the reaction of uh, carboxylic benzoic acid with ammonia, you will be able to form this benzamide as the product. 
uh, by uh, removal of water, uh, generally uh, the reaction of uh, amine with aliphatic carboxylic acid is very difficult, it forms salt. However, uh, you can try to make amide with uh, aryl carboxylic acid. The best way is uh, just as we have seen. If you have uh, carboxylic acid, you can readily convert into the corresponding acid chloride. Then you can try to react with uh, ammonia, then you can uh, generate the amide as a product. Instead of uh, reacting with uh, uh, carboxylic acid ammonia to make amide, you can convert into acid chloride. Suppose if you have the carboxylic acid, you can react with oxalyl chloride. So, you can convert into the corresponding acid chloride. Once you have acid chloride, then you can readily react with amine. Here, the reaction of ammonia is shown, and it can undergo substitution reaction. You will be able to get this amide as a product where you generate HCl as a byproduct. It is a very simple addition reaction. So, this can when you do the workup with uh, bicarbonate, it will be converted into amide, HCl will be removed by the uh, base workup. In place of acid chloride, you can also use acid anhydride. This also can readily undergo reaction to give amide as a product where you generate acid as a byproduct. For in this case, for example, This salt now you will have this, this salt can remove this proton, then you will be able to form amide plus carboxylic acid as a byproduct. So, if you use acid anhydride as a substrate, it can also readily undergo reaction with your amine or ammonia, in this case here ammonia. So, you will be able to form the amide as a product where you generate one equivalent of carboxylic acid as a byproduct. This another example as we have seen this also similar to this uh, substrate anhydride as we have seen here if you have ammonia it can undergo addition reaction with this carbonyl group. which can convert into so intramolecular proton transfer can give the carboxylic acid Once you form this one, then since this is a aryl carboxylic acid, it can undergo intramolecular addition with this carbonyl group and you will be able to form So, this can convert into
this can now lose water molecule, then you'll be able to form this uh, imide as the product. Therefore, when whenever you have the amine or ammonia that can readily undergo addition reaction with this uh, unsaturated carbon system like uh, if you have the acid chloride, acid anhydride or uh, aryl carboxylic acid, they can be readily converted into the corresponding amide as the product. In addition to ammonia, you can also add other nitrogen nucleophiles. In this case, for example, if you look at here, you have the acid chloride. The reaction of this acid chloride with the hydrogen has been shown can uh, react as just we have seen uh, just now. Uh, you can get this derivative once you form this one. Now it can undergo further reaction. Now you have the NH2 here, you have the amide nitrogen, but among this, this is nucleophilic enough. This can further react with this acid chloride and uh, you can convert into corresponding this uh, compound. And uh, if you look at uh, here, the reaction of acid chloride with the sodium acide is shown and you can make acyl acide as a product. Uh, this is a precursor for the Curtis rearrangement. All of you know very well. And if you have acyl acide, Can it write like this? Once we have this one, so this can now uh, when you heat, when you heat this can come here, this can lose N2, then you will be able to form isocyanate as the intermediate. Once you form this isocyanate, just we have seen you can try to uh, readily react with a variety of nucleophile addition reactions, you can end up with uh, diverse scaffolds. So, this is the precursor as you can see here for the Curtis rearrangement. If you have this acyl acide, you, when you heat it, it can convert into uh, isocyanate that can be further reacted with variety of uh, nucleophile for the uh, formation of uh, different scaffolds. The next example involves the reaction of uh, this ester with hydroxyl amine. When you react as we just we have seen, uh, when you react with the hydroxyl amine, you can lose uh, what alcohol in this case, since you carry out the reaction with uh, uh, ethyl ester. So, you can end up with this compound which can atomerize to the hydroxyamic acid and which we can, when you do the hydrolysis, you will be able to form carboxylic acid and uh, hydroxyl amine. If you look at here, what you do is generate a carbon nitrogen bond a new carbon nitrogen bond between this carbon, the nitrogen of the hydroxyl amine, you can make a carbon nitrogen bond. And this compound as you shown here, hydroxyamic acids give this deeply colored complexes, the iron 3 salts. And this provides a method for the directing the ester group in qualitative analysis. When you have this uh, hydroxyamic acid, when you react with iron 3 salt, you form a complex. So, this is method is used in qualitative analysis to find out whether your system has ester or not. So, uh, this uh, when you take this hydroxyamic acid uh, with iron 3 salt, you will be able to form uh, this iron 3 complex, which is as you see it gives this is a deeply colored complex. And this analysis used to find out the ester group in qualitative analysis. So far, we have studied the reaction of nucleophilic amine to electrophilic carbons.
whatever we have seen, all the examples involve a nucleophilic amine which undergo readily reaction with uh, electrophilic carbon atoms, you make a carbon nitrogen bond. All the examples involve the reactions of nucleophilic amine to electrophilic carbon systems. Now onwards we are going to look at it, the reactions of electrophilic nitrogen with uh, nucleophilic carbon systems. And this example look at here, uh, the reaction of HNO2 uh, with this uh, ketone is shown and you can give this oxime as the product. If you look at the mechanism, when you take this HNO2 uh, in, uh, in the presence of acid, in acid medium, you can convert into, you can protonate the OH group. As you can see here, you can do the protonation, then you will form this intermediate. Once you form this one, now you have the lone pair, then you can lose water molecule and you can generate the NO plus, this nitrosonium ion. So, when you have the HNO2 in acidic medium, you will be able to generate NO plus, which is electrophile. Already we have seen if you have ketone in acidic medium, it can exist in enol form. So, once we have the enol now in acidic medium, so this can now act as a nucleophile which can undergo addition reaction as shown here. Once you form the enol, now it can undergo addition reaction with this nitrosonium ion. So, this acts as a nucleophile, this can be formed in acidic medium from the uh, ketone and once you form uh, this enol, if it can undergo addition reaction, then you will be able to form this intermediate, this can lose proton, then you can make this derivative which can convert into oxime as shown here. Therefore, if you have HNO2 in acidic medium can be readily reacted with the enols, you can give the get the addition product. What you do here, you generate, you make a new carbon nitrogen bond between this carbon and uh, the nitrogen of uh, this nitrosonium ion, you make a new carbon nitrogen bond. So, in this reaction as uh, I mentioned just now, this acts as electrophile, this acts as nucleophile. Some more examples given in this slide, if you look at this 1,3 dicarbonyl compound, when you react with any NO2 in acidic medium, you will be able to form this oxime as just we have seen, this also 1,3 dicarbonyl compound in acidic medium can exist as you can see here as a uh, enol, once you have the enol which can readily undergo reaction, if you have this can readily undergo reaction. To give this uh, oxime as a product. The next example involves the reaction of nitromethane. The reaction of nitromethane uh, shown with this nitrosonium ion. As all of you know, this also in acidic medium can uh, exist like this. Once you form this one now, this can undergo addition reaction and you will be able to form uh, this intermediate. Once you form this one, this can isomerize. It can convert into this uh, methyl nitrolic acid as a product. Uh, this example as we have seen, this also can convert into enol. Once you form the enol as just we have seen, it can also readily undergo addition reaction, then you will be able to form this oxime as the inter, uh, product. And this also similar to this uh, 1, 3 digarbonyl compound, acetylastone, this also can in acidic medium, exists as enol. This enol, whatever you generate, it can undergo addition reaction.
then you'll be able to form this oxygen as the product. So if you look at all these reactions, these reactions involve enol as the nucleophile, you have to carry out the reaction acidic medium so that the addition reaction can be efficiently carried out. The next example involves, as just we have seen the reaction of uh, ethyl acetoacetate with the NaNO2 in acidic acid and it can readily undergo a reaction where NO is the electrophile, this acts as a nucleophile and once if we have this oxime, this oxime can be readily reduced using zinc and acetic acid and you can get this amino derivative. Once you form this amino derivative which can be readily reacted uh, with another molecule of ethyl acetate, then in this way you will be able to form uh, the tetra substituted pyrrolidine as a product. Now this is one of the effective synthetic route to construct a highly substituted pyrrole. If you look at here, uh, this uh, reaction, uh, first you convert this to this uh, amine uh, derivative, once you form this one, now this can, when you react, it can make condensation with this uh, carbonyl group followed by then condensation of this carbon with this one, then you will be able to form the tetra substituted pyrrole as the product. The next one again, this is oxime. Oxime also can be, if you have um, acidic medium, you can try to do hydrolysis, you will be able to form the diketone. For example, if you have this ketone and you can try to react, then you will be able to form this oxime as the product, keto oxime. Once you form this one, when you do hydrolysis, then you can introduce a carbonyl group. So this is one of the approach. If you want to make introduce a carbonyl group uh, in this carbon, arba carbon atom, you can try to react with the nitrosonium ion, then you can make the oxime. And once you do the hydrolysis, then you will be able to uh, end up with a carbonyl group. So this here on example shown, you can try to readily uh, make this uh, diketone uh, from this uh, ethyl methyl ketone as a starting material. When you react with the nitrosonium ion in acidic medium, you can get this oxime that can be readily hydrolyzed to give this diketone as the product. So far, we have seen some exa examples where you use a nitrosonium ion as the electrophile. Now we are going to look at the use of uh, nitronium ion as electrophile. Uh, an example shown here, when you have this uh, benzyl nitrile, this can readily undergo reaction with this uh, nitro compound in the presence of base. Uh, you can get this nitro compound after hydrolysis. It involves uh, two steps. First, when you react with base, base can deprotonate this acidic proton, then you will be able to form which can be stabilized by the aryl ring as well as a nitrile group. Once you form this anion which can now readily undergo addition reaction with this nitro group as shown then you will be able to get this salt. Once you form this one now this can lose methoxy group then you can get this uh, nitro derivative. Once you form this one this can be further converted into carboxylic acid and when you do the decarboxylation then you can end up with this benzyl nitro derivative. So if you have the benzyl nitrile uh, compound you can try to replace the nitrile group with the nitro group as shown here. As all of you know very well already we have studied the hydrolysis of uh, nitrile. If you have nitrile group acidic medium you can try to readily convert into carboxylic acid Once you form this one, now water can undergo addition reaction. 
you will be able to form this can convert into so this can further react with another molecule of water you will form this salt. Once you form this salt, this can now can be converted into carboxylic acid. Therefore, nitrile uh, in acidic medium can be readily converted into the carboxylic acid. Once we have the carboxylic acid already we have seen when you heat it, uh, since you have the electron withdrawing group nitro group can be readily converted into the corresponding nitro compound by decarboxylation. When you heat it, it can lose uh, carbon dioxide to give this benzyl nitro derivative as a product. Here the reaction of 2,4-dinitrotoluene with uh, this substrate is shown. As you can see here in the pressure base, you can deprotonate the benzylic proton. You can deprotonate. So, you can generate the carbon ion which can be stabilized by the nitro group present the aromatic ring. Once we have this one, this can readily uh, act as a nucleophile, it can undergo addition reaction with this nitroso compound as you can see here. This can undergo addition reaction, you will be able to form this hydroxyl amine derivative. Once you form this one, now this can lose water molecule as shown here, then you will be able to form the imine as the product. Once you form the imine and this can be readily hydrolyzed in acidic conditions, then you will be able to form aldehyde as the product. And uh, so, as you can see here, therefore, if you have toluene which is substituted with electron withdrawing group like nitro group, is acidic enough that proton can be easily removed by base. The carbon ion now can readily undergo addition reaction with nitrozonium uh, derivative as shown here. Once it can undergo addition reaction, followed by dehydration, you will be able to form the uh, ship base. Once you form the imine, that imine can readily undergo hydrolysis under acidic conditions, then you will be able to form aldehyde's product. This is one of the way, uh, if you have this kind of substrate, it can be converted into aldehyde as shown here. And first what you do here, you react with the base and you generate the anion. Once you form this one, this undergoes addition uh, with this uh, nitroso compound. Uh, that addition uh, product gives this hydroxylamine derivative that readily loses water molecule to give this imine as the product. That imine uh, under acidic conditions undergoes hydrolysis to give this aldehyde as the product. So far we have seen several reactions where we have the first part we have seen the reactions of nucleophilic amine with the electrophilic carbons. The second part we have seen the reactions of nucleophilic carbon particularly enol or carbon ion to the electrophilic uh, nitrogens like uh, nitroso or nitro compounds. Now, let us look at amino acids, peptides and proteins. All of you know very well, peptides and the proteins are important components of cells that carry out important biological functions. Peptides are smaller than proteins. Proteins and peptides are very similar by being made up of chains of amino acids that are held together by peptide bonds. Here the structure of a peptide is shown and you can see here 
amide bond, this between the carboxylic acid and amino group of amino acid. And this is called C terminal amino acid. This is N terminal amino acid. Now, let us uh, look at the synthesis of all the amino acids. As you can see here, if you have the carboxylic acid, you can do halogenation of the alpha carbon atom using as an example shown here. If you use PBr3 in the presence of bromine, you can do the bromination of the alpha carbon atom. Once if you have the alpha bromo carboxylic acid, when you react with ammonia and you will be able to form the alpha amino carboxylic acid. The mechanism of uh, this reaction shown here, uh, as you can see here, this undergoes substitution reaction and you will be able to form uh, this salt. Once you form this salt which can undergo addition reaction with this carbonyl group as is shown here, then you will be able to form this can lose then you get this acyl bromide once if you have this one now this can exist in the form of enol once you have the enol it can readily undergo reaction further with the bromine as shown here so then you will be able to form uh, this alpha bromo acyl bromide once you form this one when you do the hydrolysis then you will be able to get the alpha bromo carboxylic acid as a product. This is one of the uh, method where you can try to uh, carry out alpha halogenation of carboxylic acid using for example in this reaction the reaction of bromine in the process of PBr3 has been carried out in this way you can introduce the bromine at the alpha carbon atom. Once if you form this alpha bromo carboxylic acid that can be readily reacted with ammonia and you can uh, produce the alpha amino acid as the product. Here are some examples are shown instead of PBR3 they have used here PCL3 the bromine. So as we just we have seen you can also using PCL3 you can try to uh, form this alpha bromo phenylastic acid as the product. Once you form this one as just we have seen you can react with ammonia. So by SN2 pathway then you can you can make this amino acid as the product but here the reaction of cyclohexane carboxylic acid is shown with the PCL3 in the presence of chlorine, you can also as just we have seen, you can induce chlorine at the alpha carbon atom as just we have seen. And the another approach is shown here already we have seen Strecker amino acid synthesis. When you have the aldehyde, aldehyde can be readily reacted with uh, amine by condensation you will be able to form amine. Once you form the imine and this can readily undergo addition reaction with one to addition reaction then you will you will be able to form this alpha amino nitrile as the product. Once you have this one uh, this can be readily uh, converted into carboxylic acid just we have seen if you have the nitrile group uh, by acid hydrolysis you can convert into carboxylic acid. So in this way we have aldehyde and amine and this can be readily contents to give the imine that imine can be reacted with the nitrile and you will be able to form uh, the alpha amino nitrile derivative. This can be further hydrolyzed to carboxylic acid. This is another approach to make the uh, alpha amino acid as a product. Here on another example shown if you have the ketone, the ketone can be readily reacted with uh, ammonium carbonate to give uh, imine as shown here that imine can be reacted with this now cyanide ion as uh, it can undergo addition reaction you can get this 
nitrile derivative. Once if you have this one, this can now can undergo addition reaction with the carbon dioxide and proton transfer you will be able to get this compound which can undergo intramolecular cyclization to give this oxonium ion intermediate. Once you have this one, this can convert into this by proton transfer. You can have this uh, isocyanide derivative which can undergo intramolecular addition reaction as shown here. Then in this way you will be able to form this hydrantium. Once you form this one, when you do the hydrolysis you will be able to convert into alpha amino acids. So, this is also one of the effective synthetic routes. Therefore, if you have the ketone, this ketone can uh, can be readily reacted with ammonium carbonate in the presence of cyanide ion to give hydrantion that ca would be can be further converted into alpha amino acid by hydrolysis. Here some examples are shown. So, if you look at this ketone can be readily converted into uh, this derivative. Once if you have this one when you do the hydrolysis you will be able to form the corresponding uh, amino acid as a product. And similarly, another example is shown is the reaction of uh, this ketone with ammonium carbonate and the cyanide ion. This also can be converted into this. This can be further hydrolyzed to the corresponding amino acid derivative. Here, the synthesis of peptide are shown. This to condensation of this amino acid. If you look at amino acid, you have the two functional group. One is amino group. Another one is carboxylic acid group. And you have to protect one of the functional group. For example, in this case. If you want to react the carboxylic acid, you have to protect the amino group and so that is selectively you can try to react the acid group and similarly the another amino acid, you have to protect the carboxylic acid. So, now you have the free the amino group and free carboxylic acid from this amino acid. This two amino acid can be coupled together using coupling uh, reagent, you will be able to form a carbon nitrogen bond, amide bond. So, here uh, some of the common coupling reagents are shown. These are the common carbodiamides used to for the coupling of amines and the carboxylic acid to make the amide bond. And here some of the examples are shown and this sometimes this optically active amino acids undergoes racemization to minimize the racemization. These are the additives are added during the peptide synthesis. Here some of the uh, examples shown for the uh, protecting of uh, the carboxylic acid groups. And if you for example, if you have a carboxylic acid you can protect as uh, convert into ester. Here you can convert into methyl ester or benzyl ester or tertiary butyl ester. This production can be carried out. For example, if you want to make the tertiary butyl ester, what you can do here you can take the carboxylic acid react with isobutene the acid medium then you will be able to form this tertiary butyl ester. As all of you know very well, when you take this isobutene and react with carboxylic acid acid medium, first what happens it acts as a nucleophile undergoes addition reaction with this proton, then you will be able to form a tertiary carbocation. This is the electrophile. Once you form this one, now your acid can you will be able to form this ester as the product. So, after the reaction what you can do you can also try to deproduct the ester using acidic medium as shown here the mechanism shown in this way you will be able to uh, regenerate the carboxylic acid. So, just we have seen how you can protect the carboxylic functional group of amino acid you can convert into ester and uh, so after the reaction you can do hydrolysis you get back your carboxylic acid. In case of amino group 
uh, these are the common protecting group we use for the uh, production of amino group here the tertiary butoxy carbonyl group you can the unhydrate is available so you can react with amine it can react So in this way, you can try to protect this amino group. The other common uh, protecting group is this one, carbobenzoxy protecting group. You can also use this one, fluorinyl oxy carbonyl as a protecting group. This is a common uh, protecting group used for the uh, production of amino group in peptide synthesis. An example shown here. So as you can see here, this is commercially available. When you react with amine, in the presence of base, you will be able to form, you can this n protected derivative as you can see here once you form this one and this now after the reaction what you can do when you react with the base and this proton is acidic enough now you can deprotonate and then in this way you will be able to cleave uh, deproduct this uh, protecting group and you can get back your uh, amino group so these are the common protecting group used uh, for the production of amino group in the peptide synthesis now let us see one example for the construction of tripeptide. Here the N protected this glycine has been reacted with this alanine tetrabutyl ester. As you can see, you have the free NH2 group in the case of this alanine uh, part. In the case of glycine, you have the free uh, carboxylic acid. You can couple together using the DCC as the coupling agent. Uh, you can make a amide bond between this carbonyl group of uh, this glycine, carboxylic acid as well as the amino group of alanine, you can make the peptide bond. Once you form this one, as just we have seen, it can act as a base, you can deprotect this proton, you will be able to form this dipeptide. Once you form the dipeptide, you have the free NH2, the another one has the free carboxylic acid, this is derived from phenylalanine. Now again you can make amide bond between this carboxylic acid group, carbonyl group and this amino group uh, using DCC once again and then you can make uh, this tripeptide. Once the reaction is completed as we have seen you can uh, remove this protecting group using this base, you will be able to get this uh, tripeptide and this, uh, this ester group can be easily cleaved using the acid as the catalyst. So, in this case that uh, DCC is converted into corresponding urea so this is where the, the synthesis of peptide is carried out uh, as since amino acid has two functional group one is amino group, another one is the carboxylic acid group, you have to decide which one you want to react. When you want, you have to protect the other one, in this way you will be able to carry out the uh, uh, peptide synthesis. Here the role of DCC and the n hydroxyacinamide in peptide synthesis shown. The DCC first provokes reaction with this carboxylic acid, then you will form this o urea intermediate, it is a good leaving group. Once you have this one, now this can readily react with this n succinamide to give this urea, this derivative, once you have this derivative, which can be readily now reacted with amine, as you can see, it can undergo a readily reaction, then you will be able to generate this as well as this amide as the product. This is converted into dicyclohexyl urea as the product. In summary, today we have seen the first part we have seen the synthesis of allylamine, aziridines uh, and the reactions of amines with unsaturated uh, carbon systems. If you look at all these reactions involve amine as a nucleophile, they can readily undergo uh, addition reactions with uh, carbon systems to give carbon nitrogen bond. Then we have seen the second part, the reactions of electrophilic 
uh, nitrogen with nucleophilic carbon atoms. We have seen particular the reactions of nitrozonium ion and the NO2 plus and uh, so we have seen some examples. Then we have seen the synthesis of amino acids and uh, peptides. Uh, with this we conclude this lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you.